The board want to have a meeting with me, but I don't have a shirt, tie, suit, jacket, trousers that, that are jogging trousers. I'll be honest, I'm a bit of a scruff, but I hope they're okay. I hope it's not a, a negative meeting. Let's find out. Yeah, so welcome back in here to the Killy Boys with 11am Sports and we start off with the board wanting a meeting and I saw that and I got dis- very worried but it turns out they want to discuss a new contract. So we'll hit attend the meeting and find out exactly what they're wanting to talk about. We'd like to gauge your opinion on whether discussing a new contract for you will received at this point. Well... I'm not exactly going to disagree here, am I? I think it's a fantastic idea and the announcement of a new contract and a stable future will give everyone associated with the club a huge confidence boost. Good. They're going to uh, put those plans into motion. So let's see what they eventually do once we leave. A new contract is to be offered uh, and they'll be doing it shortly. I look forward to that. So let's just have a look at the games that we've played since we last saw you. We won 7-2 against East Fife in the Cup and we're like, right, let's keep this good form and it did not happen. Instead, we lost 3-2 against St. Johnson. We went down 1-0, 2-1 up and then conceded two goals in the second half to lose the game 3-2 against St. Johnson, who were 11th in the league at that point. Very disappointing. Then no surprises, a 2-0 loss away to Celtic. Nobody played particularly well in that game. But we did play well in the 3-2 victory over Hibernian. Went up 2-0, came back to 2-0, was slightly worried about Craig Sibble with his first goal of the season, having come off the bench, got us the win there. We then played the other half of Edinburgh, which was against Hearts, and we played at home and we won 4-1 in that game. We were actually 4-1 up before the sending off, and then nothing else really happened in that. But a nice easy win for us there. Hearts, who are in the, the bottom half of the table. And then... We played both sides of Edinburgh and now we played the second side of Glasgow again there. Two wins against Edinburgh teams but two losses to the Glasgow teams. Rangers beating us 2-0 there. Craig McGilvery, even though he conceded two goals with a 7.5 overall rating because he was worked quite a lot in that game. Looking at league table, that leaves us in fifth position. We're four points of Hamilton in fourth and Motherwell have put a game more, uh, sorry, a game less than us are five points ahead. It looks like Top six is almost secure. Hibernian are nine points below us uh, with just five games before the split. So hopefully we can confirm that uh, that fifth, well, that top half. We want to go higher than fifth, but certainly that top half uh, split position. You can see the player stats. Rodel Richards is actually there with 19 goals. Just one of Morelos uh, in the top scoring charts at the moment. And Craig McGilvery has got six players of the match, which... When you think about how goalkeepers used to be rated in Football Manager, it's quite amazing that he's, he's doing that. The, the ratings for goalkeepers are certainly improved this year compared to what they were. For anyone else who's interested in the league as a whole, you can see their Rangers have played a game more than Celtic, but are currently 17 points ahead. So it looks like Rangers are going to win the title for the second year in a row uh, after Celtic had won that for so many years. Rangers now looking like they are the dominant side in the SPL. But today, we play against Air United in the Scottish Cup quarter-final. Well, let's have a look at the team. So we have quite a few injuries in the team at the moment. Yaya Toure, Chris Buck, Nathan Broadhead, Ziggy Gordon, Gary Dicker's returning from, fit, uh, from injury. He's got low fitness, same with Ryan Harrington. So the kind of squad almost picks itself. And then from that, I have to pick the team. And we're going to go with the one, as you can see here. We're going to go with Craig McGilvery and goal. Tam O'Brien and Stuart Finlay at the back. They've been the centre-back partnership ever since Ted and Menge left. I had a wee look to see if I could get Ted and Menge again, but he's actually playing on loan for Newcastle in the English Premiership, uh, English Premier League. So that tells you quite how good he was compared to compared to the rest of my players. At full-back, we're going to go with Bezier on the right. He's been playing very well. He's got a good link now with McKenzie. And we're actually going to play with Waters on the left uh, because he had been playing fairly well last game, didn't play great, but nobody played particularly well against Rangers, unfortunately. In the middle, Tish Bola and Tom White, even though White's maybe not got the great conditioning, uh, still have him in there for this important game. He can probably come off for Malumbu or Sibold or Dicker at, 
at half time we're into the second half Mackenzie and Hines on the wings and Richards and Brophy as the gruesome twosome up front as they have 25 and 19 goals respectively for the two of them really good for us up front let's get into this game very exciting and here are the two teams standing out now in their huddles just before this Ayrshire derby the first one of this series and that should be very exciting indeed first highlight here and it looks like Ayr have got the ball, but we've won it back. McKenzie coming across the pitch now, driving forward. He's challenged, and that didn't look like a penalty, but the referee's given it, and I'm not going to argue. It looks like it's Eamon Brophy who steps up to take this. Can he score two minutes into the game? He certainly can. Bottom corner, and that's 1-0 already. Three minutes into the game, Kelly beating Ayr 1-0. What a start for us here. You see a 20th goal of the season right in the corner. No one's getting that. What a goal. Ten minutes gone and we've got another highlight here. Berger on the right finds Tishbola, finds White. Back to Berger. McKenzie. Richards back to McKenzie. Hines and he tucks that in to the open goal. It's actually his first goal of the season, Kalen Hines. And that's 2-0, 11 minutes into this game. It's good build-up play on the right-hand side there from Kilmarnock. Obviously, they are in the division below us. So we're expected to win deflected there, oh, well, parried from the goalkeeper, and Hines scores 2-0. Come on, boys. There's a highlight straight from kickoff here, and they play the ball forward towards Zanata, the lone striker for them today. Challenged with the ball in the midfield. Challenged by Tishbola. Finds Richards, who's tackled as well, but the ball comes back to Kamara here. White threads it through to Brophy. Back to Richards, and it's bouncing about there, and it's gone out for a throw in. The ball cleared from the United goalkeeper. Towards their strikers, but it's intercepted by our defenders. We pass the ball about, we've played it forward to Richards, who's now clean through here. Can he finish? He certainly can. As he's 26 of the season, within 20 minutes, Kamarnock are up 3 0 against Air. An absolute demolition job so far. The ball played long over the top, the way that we have been playing with our pacey strikers. Richards gets it, shoots across the goalkeeper into that far corner. Thank goodness for this. I was worried we might slip up, but it doesn't look like we will. More of the ball on the right-hand side for us here. Aaron Tishbola with it now after the header clear from the defender. Waters plays it through to Hines, and that's a good save at the front post. Really should have went across the keeper. Tried to sneak it in the front post, though, but a good save. Oh, and Hines heads it, and it's a good save from there. I'm not going to try and say the keeper's name. I know you want me to try and say it. Alua Yemi, it's hard to say. I'm not going to say it. We've got another highlight here, though. It's air on the ball. Murdoch into Chalmers. Up to Walsh, Smith, Zanata. Out to Ekrapont. Good challenge. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's a good challenge, but for some reason it's a penalty. Let, let me have a look again to see if that was a penalty. We see here Ekrapont with the ball. And there's a... I mean, I feel as if he's got the ball there, but I suppose we can't complain after... The penalty we got, which I wasn't sure was a penalty either. They're just kind of levelling it out, obviously. So a penalty here for Air Chalmers to take it, and it's slotted in that corner. He runs to get the ball to take it back. Obviously thinking they've got a chance of coming back in this game, which they don't. 3-1 to Kilmarnock still, 40 minutes played. And a highlight straight from kickoff again. We've had a few of those so far in this game. Ball was played forward, but it's intercepted by Air. Played forward again and intercepted by air again. I feel as if I'm a, just repeat myself here like a parrot. Murdoch gets the ball into Chalmers. I'd be very disappointed if we can see another goal here, but it looks like we've got the chance. McKenzie through to Brophy. Can Brophy finish it? What a save from the goalkeeper. Another throw on the right-hand side for Kilmarnock. This seems to be where we're fairly dangerous. Tishbola finds Berger out to White. Brophy, Richards, can he finish? his challenge, but Hines puts it in the goal. He's second of the game. He's second of the season. 4-1. Still in the first half. Tishbola with the ball here into Berger. White gets the ball, flicks it through to Brophy, feeds it to Richards. It's a good challenge from the defender, but it drops to Hines, who shoots into the open goal and makes it four goals to one. Still in the first half. And that's us got to half time. I'm going to tell the boys that I'm very happy with how things are going. And I'm going to bring off Tom White, who, as we see, was struggling before the game started, and bring on Yusuf Malumbo. Probably not his best role as a box-to-box -box midfielder, Yusuf Malumbo, at the age that he is, but we'll take it. His uh, quality in the midfield is invaluable. Just his experience as well, uh, playing in there. He's a, a real high-quality player. Maybe not as good as he used to be, but 
Never mind, we've got Brophy on the ball in attacking positions here. Finds that player I was talking about, Malumbu, into Tishbola. The ball was played forward, it was intercepted, and Tishbola gets the ball again. Bears are here through to Richards on. Goodness me, the last episode, I'm sure it was against East Fife, where Berger had that amazing assist, and this is another amazing assist, not quite a volley this time, but the ball comes out to him here, and first time through to Richards, who then hits that on the volley, that is a beautiful goal, and that's 5-1 to Kilmarnock, come on! I throw in, and some of the air players appear to have gone invisible, this feels like cheating, I'll be honest, look, Wardrop's invisible here, what what's why why are we playing against invisible players? They're just heads, arms, and legs running about with no bodies. Watch out, guy! Look, watch out! There's invisible, invisible players. What? How on earth is what's happening? Murder! The invisible murder plays the ball forward. Now that's not fair. He was invisible. We couldn't challenge him, and it's a good goal though. But how? I'm happy with Zanata scoring. We can see him, but the rest of the players that passed the ball to him, we couldn't see. What? What's this about? Zanata gets the ball and he slots it across the goalkeeper. But we're playing against an invisible team. How can you play a game against ghosts? That's not fair. And we're restarting here and they're still ghosts. They have three players who are not ghosts. This does not seem fair. Bart with the ball. The invisible Bart finds a pair. Rapare. And to Chalmers, who's again invisible. Murdoch, also invisible. Walsh, he scores a goal. The, if we lose this game because we're playing against ghosts, I will not be happy. Look at all these invisible players. A good finish from that that ghost of Walsh, but there's, he's not real, so that's not fair. We couldn't see him. Make a couple of changes, bring off Berger. He's getting a bit tired. We can bring on Adam Matthews over there, and Rudy McKenzie can come off. We'll put Richards out to the right-hand side and bring on Ross Stewart up top to see if he can get a goal. He's been in a bit of a goal drought recently. How are we meant to mark these players? They're invisible. It's cleared by Richards eventually. And we've reached full time. 5-3. The invisible players of air tried to make it a bit close at the end there. But thankfully, the completely, totally, fully seen players of Kilmarnock ended up winning the game. Imagine we lost a team of ghosts. That'd be worrying. On to the next one. Well, here Kilmarnock have offered us a new contract, a new two-year contract on £5,250 a week. They still want us to play counter-attacking football and develop young players and sign young players. They're not very happy. I've been signing quite a lot of old ones. Have you noticed? Don't need to mention Yaya Touré there. Um, I think they already know what happened there. Uh, I'm to work within the wage budget, which I've not been doing, but let's pretend we were. And maximum one-year contracts for players over the age of 32. At the end of this current season, they would like us to reach the quarterfinal of the Betfred Cup, which I can't quite remember. Did we do that? But we definitely reached the quarterfinal of the Scottish Cup. We've actually now reached the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. We'll easily get mid-table. Uh, for this season and for future years they're just looking for a top half finish which we have done in past previous years so let's start these negotiations am I happy with this? get a wee bonus if we win the Scottish Cup or qualify for the Euro Cup yes I'm very happy let's finalise that deal and we have renewed our contract for another two years that's us here until the end of twenty. Oh, the, the, the end? no? middle? Well, how, how do you describe March? Uh the, the, the end of the 2023-2024 season. So two more years after this one. The Sky Sports are asking me if I'm happy. I'm delighted to sign a deal with this club. Let's move on to our next game against Motherwell. But before we do that, we have the Scottish Cup semi-final draw to do. I'll just quickly move my face out the way. You can see the teams that are in it. We've got Dundee United, Hamilton, ourselves and Rangers, let's see who we get. Automatic draw on for some tension. Let's see what names come out of the hat. Dungeon United will play against Rangers and we will play against Hamilton. We're at home in the tie and now we've magically went to away. Is that because they're played at Hamden so there's not actually a home team? I'm assuming that must be what it is because the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup are played at Hamilton. So we play Hamilton in the semi-final and the other semi-final is Dundee United against Rangers. I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm glad to have avoided Rangers because I think we might have been put out. But Hamilton, though they're doing fairly well in the league, if we look at it here, they're just above us in the league. 
I think we've got a chance against them there. Well, here we are back again, ready for our Scottish Premiership game against Motherwell. You can see we have some problems still with Toure, Burke, Broadhead injured, Ziggy Gordon injured and also suspended for this match. Dicker and Tishbola struggling with fitness, which means that the team is as follows. McGovern and go with O'Brien and Finlay in front. Bedger and Waters at fullback. Sibold and White playing in the midfield. Sibyl playing in that deep line playmaker role. McKenzie on the right, Hines on the left, and Richards and Brophy up front. I could have played Adam Matthews, but I've been fairly happy with Callum Waters the last couple of games. So until he does something not good enough, he will be playing left back for us, which, to be honest, it, it could be this game. He does something not good enough, but we'll see. This game against Motherwell, a very important game as they are third in the Premiership at the moment. So a team that we really want to be beating to try and get up to there ourselves. Hamilton, who are in fourth, did just beat Rangers, who are top of the table uh, the day before this 2-1. So we do really need to win to try and keep up with those teams. And Brophy's got the ball early on from the goal kick. And it was nearly, nearly a goal, but not quite. Adonald, the former Kilmarnock player, throws the ball in for Motherwell there. And the ball is cleared out by our defenders. It goes all the way back to Carson, the goalkeeper for Motherwell. Gallagher with the ball. He plays it forward. And Watt chases onto this. And he shoots it wide. The lucky escape for us there. Another highlight here. Corner kick from Paulworth. And it's been cleared by us. O'Hara with the ball on the edge of our box into Gallagher. Zande Silva is going out wide at a thought. No, it's intercepted by Beja. They are well challenged. Brophy wins the header to Richard, who has a hit, and it's collected easily by Carson. Sibbled with the ball in midfield, and it's intercepted by Paulworth, and Cole comes away with it now for Motherwell. Sibbled running... Could some of our players maybe attempt to challenge there? They were just running away from him. Sibbled in particular was very disappointed with there. couple of minutes to go until half-time here, and Silva's running forward. Plays the ball back to Carroll. Carroll going down the left into Paulworth in the middle. Bowden, and it's a good save from McGilvery. Is this going to be a breakaway chance for us, or is it going to be the end of the highlight? The ball's played forward. It's found Brophy. Brophy hits it, and it's gone wide. There's been some poor finishing from both teams so far in this game, and that was another example of it. There's just one minute added time still to be played, and Silva has the ball from the goal kick from McGilvery. Carroll now with it into Paulworth, into Silva there, and that is somehow gone in I'm not sure how I might need to see that replay Carroll plays into Paulworth Silva here hits it it bounces off one post and into the other one something like that but it was a poor attempt at a save from McGill he shouldn't really be beating at the front post and that's us 1-0 down just going into half time that's going to affect our team talk we're going to say that we owe it to Motherwell after what happened last time I don't know what happened last time I assume we got beat and then we'll continue this second half maybe by trying to get those players riled up slightly. And we've got a throw on the left. Waters into Brophy. Brophy forced out wide again. Waters kicks it off the Motherwell player. Not intelligent at all. And Cole comes away with the ball. Now, Finlay challenges and it's a good, a good, a great and good challenge. Richards gets the ball from the long ball forward and it's a good save from the goalkeeper. I'll try and get the words to actually come out of my mouth the way they're meant to come out. Another highlight here though, with Bears are swinging the ball into the box, it's well cleared by Gallagher. Polworth flicks the ball on. They've got one striker there and six defenders. We should be fine. Silva down the left-hand side. Skins the defender. Plays the ball back into Polworth. Is he going to shoot from the edge of the box? Bowden there. And that has somehow not gone in the goal. I think that was a great save from McGilvery onto the crossbar. And that keeps it at 1-0 Motherwell. Going to make some changes here. We're going to bring Tishbola on, even though he's not fully fit, but bring him on for Sybil. I've not been impressed with the way Sybil's played. Kaelin Hines has not played well either, so we're going to put Ross Stewart out there on the left-hand side, and we'll turn him into a wide target man on attack. Almost play with kind of three up front for him out there, just to provide something uh, something different. White with a free kick. He plays it in, and it's well collected by Carson. Could this be a breakaway chance for Motherwell, I think it may be. The ball's played for Berger. Hen, uh, he hens, heads it back. And it's going straight to Silva here. Mackenzie tries to track him back. Silva gets challenged. That looks more of a penalty than any of the ones in the last game we had. But I'll happily say it's not. Richard gets the ball from Mackenzie here. Can he finish? He can't. He aims for the front post and it's a good save from Carson. Last throw of the dice here, and it's not really a, a very good throw. We're just bringing off Bezer and bringing on Adam Matthews at right back as Bezer is a bit tired. 
hoping that Matthews may be able to track back with Silva a little bit more. And just as I say that, Silva gets taken off as well. Extra, th- well, added time counting down now. We've lost 1-0 to Motherwell. I mean, I suppose we can't be hugely disappointed with that. Motherwell are really the third best team in this division. But I would have liked to try to beat them. Maybe next time. So looking at the fixtures and where the Scottish Cup semi-final has slotted into it, they're right in the bottom. I've just moved my face out the way so that you can see everything. I think we're going to come back for the Rangers game and the Hamilton game. Those two games could be very important for our season there. At that point, we may need a win against Rangers to get into the top six, or it might just be a fun game against the team who are top of the table. So the game against Rangers and then the Scottish Cup semi-final against Hamilton. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below anything you want to say. I promise to read them. Can't promise I'll like them, but I promise to read them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, bye.